In this lecture, we discuss spatial interpolation and approximation. In the first section, we will talk about the definition of spatial interpolation and show some applications. Then we will discuss different methods and their properties. We will also talk in the following sections about optimizing interpolation parameters and evaluation of interpolation accuracy. And we will close with some examples of trivariate interpolation of volumes and topic climatology. So when do we need to use interpolation? So for example, we will use it to convert scattered points, profiles or isolines, all of them are points, to raster. But we also need to use interpolation when we want to compute denser or smoother thin. And we already discussed that we need to use interpolation when we want to resample to a higher resolution a raster that represents continuous data such as elevation. So here is an example. We use interpolation to transform this set of points to this surface. So here is the example that we have already used. So we will go from scattered or irregularly distributed points to regular grid, which is the blue points. So the red points are given points, the blue points are interpolated points. We can also use interpolation to convert values measured at three-dimensional points to three-dimensional raster. For example, here we have soil properties and the, uh, the measurements are somewhat regular, but there are missing points in horizontal space and the number of points and distribution of points um, in vertical direction is, uh, is really scattered. And to create a volume model of the soil properties based on these, uh, based on these samples, we will use three-dimensional interpolation. So we will go from point to three-dimensional raster that we can then extract uh, isolines from it or we can extract these cross-sections. And we can also use even higher dimension interpolation. Uh, if we have points in three-dimensional space that were measured over time, then we need quadvariate interpolation. We have four variables. And here you can see the topography and the points, how they are distributed in three-dimensional space, where the Z, the depth, is uh, exaggerated. But you can see that they are scattered both in horizontal direction and in vertical direction. And here these points are uh, shown as they, how they are distributed in time. So each point has its X, Y location, but here the Z value doesn't represent the actual three-dimensional location, but rather distribution in time. So for example, this length here is 250 days. So here again, this point will be a little longer than 250 days. This would be around 500 days. And you can see that some of these, uh, some of these wells, these are actually well data, have only two points over time. Some of these wells have four or five points over time. So it's really scattered both in space and time. And to get an actual four-dimensional model, we need to interpolate uh, in 3D space and time. And you have already seen this, uh, seen this animation. So what are the interpolation principles? So what is, how can we precisely define the problem in addition to that we are converting scattered points to some regular grid? So what we are trying to do, we are trying to find a function 
which passes through or close to the given set of discrete points. So we have discrete points and we need to find a function that passes through these points or at least close to them. And then we use this function to compute the values at a different set of points. And this different set of points is usually a regular grid. So the mathematical formulation will look like this. So we have m points given by their coordinates and let's look at bivariate formulation for the sake of simplicity. So we have m points x, y, z and we are trying to find a function that passes through these points. So that means that in any given point x i y i the value of this function will be the measured value z or we can allow a, a small deviation from this value z and this deviation will be this e and then we will talk about approximation and we need this approximation if the data are noisy and we are trying to smooth it out. And then we use the function f to compute the z values, new z values, at the points xk, yk, where these points are usually grid points. So why is this a difficult problem? So finding a function which passes through the data points should be fairly simple. The difficulty is there is no unique solution to this problem. So for example, we can draw or find a function which looks like this. It passes through the data points. Or we decide that we don't like these steps and we want a different kind of function. So a different kind of function may look like this. Then we can decide that it has these spikes around the points and we would like it to go smoothly around the points so we can try to find something like this. This goes around the points in a smooth way but then it also jumps quite a bit around these points. So it has a pretty wild geometry. So again, that may not be uh, good, but you can see that all of these functions pass through these blue points. And this black function, again, it fulfills the given condition. So now the question is, which one is the right one? So it is obvious that the that to find a unique interpolation function, we need additional conditions. And these conditions can be formulated in different ways. One of the basic condition uh, that is fulfilled by almost all interpolation methods is locality. And we say that each point influences the surface only up to certain distance. So the points that are far apart don't influence each other anymore. And then, uh, then uh, this can be formulated uh, in geostatistical terms when we say that surface is one realization of a random function with spatial covariance. And this spatial covariance represents this, uh, this condition about how the relationship between the points changes with distance. And then we can also another, uh, we can have a condition of smoothness, which says that the sh function should pass through or close to the data points and be as smooth as possible. So it shouldn't create any sharp turns or changes or any rough features or anything like that. So we want the simplest, smoothest function that will pass through the data points. And based on these conditions, we will get different types of interpolation functions. The general equation will look like this. 
and it includes the so it will be this function will be sum of trend function and a weighted sum of some functions r and these weights are lambda uh, and uh, so r is a vector representing location of a grid point so that's uh, that's the new point rj is a location of the measured point so that's the given point then t is trend and lambda are the coefficients and the most important thing that essentially controls or uh, controls how the function will look like is this function r which is a function of distance between unsampled and measured point and this function based on the additional conditions can be called radial basis functions and those are the functions in the class where the where we have the condition of smoothness or if it is a geostatistical interpolation function then this function r will be our variogram so let's look first at the local interpolation methods in local interpolation methods we use for to compute the value in a grid point we use only a small subset of the total points and the three most important local methods are Voronoi polygons or nearest neighbor triangular irregular network or inverse distance distance weighted method and we will describe their properties uh, in the next section